you can think of your mind as a garden. You need to plant seeds to cultivate your curiosity. You can think of growing your knowledge as growing trees with branches, making connections. And then you can think of the fruits that you're getting as the result of cultivating your knowledge and your curiosity. Tending to your mind garden consists in different steps uh, that are cyclical. You, you have to keep on, on doing it. In terms of seeds, in order to have good fruits in a garden, you need to plant quality seeds, right? And so it's the same with your mind. You need to think about the quality of the information that you're planting in your mind. With good seeds, you're going to get good fruits. For your knowledge in general, you should really not think about your mind garden as a mind backyard where you just dump stuff in there and let it rot. So you really need to think about how you're going to connect ideas together, how you're going to tend to the plants and the trees, uh, how some plants tend to work better together and others tend to kill each other. It's the same with information. Some pieces of information can be combined together to create new ideas, while others have nothing to do together, or you can even have some plants that are that come from bad seeds and that are going to take up all of your mind and not leave enough space for you to cultivate interesting knowledge. And once you've made those connections and you start creating your own ideas in your mind garden, you get those fruits. And I am someone who believes in generosity. So instead of eating everything on your own, it's also a great thing to share the fruits with other people. And the idea here is to turn whatever ideas that you have into content that you can share with the world. And that other people can incorporate as seeds in their own mind gardens. And this way, we're basically growing our intelligence all together, growing our collective intelligence. So I feel like if everyone was thinking about their mind a little bit more like a garden and cultivating it and then sharing the fruits with each other, we would just basically become smarter, quicker together. One of the most popular ways to cultivate a mind garden is to build a digital garden. People say that they practice digital gardening. And for this, there are different ways of doing it. You can get your hands really dirty and code it yourself from scratch, upload it onto GitHub. But also if that's not your thing, and if you just want to focus on the curiosity, the knowledge, the creativity, there are also lots of apps and tools that you can use. The main characteristics of a tool that you want to use for mind gardening or digital gardening is the ability to very easily add seeds of knowledge to it. And second, being able to very easily connect those ideas together. So not any note-taking app is going to work for that. The kind of linear note-taking apps where you just dump documents in there are probably likely to give you more of a mind junkyard than a mind garden. But apps that have more of a knowledge graph that really help you see each piece of information, each seed as a node that you can connect with branches together. This is what you want to use for a mind garden. So some apps are Roam, for example. You also have Obsidian, Locksec. There are so many different ones there. I don't have one to recommend because I've seen people having success with lots of different ones. I highly recommend to download them, give them a little try for a week and see which ones feel more comfortable. It should really feel like gardening. So you should really go for the one that feels like it has the lowest friction for you to cultivate your garden, grow your seeds and connect your ideas together. What's great is that some of these apps make it very easy to practice public learning, which is the last, last stage of mind gardening. So when you're done creating a new idea based on all of those seeds of information and you want to share them with the world, some apps like Obsidian, for example, allow you in one click to publish it on a website that you can share with anyone. And I'm a really big fan of public learning because what it does is that it creates a healthy feedback loop on the information that you're creating. So instead of just, again, having more of this mind junkyard mindset where you create something, dump it somewhere and forget about it. Instead, you're creating a dynamic piece of content where you can get feedback from people, incorporate their ideas. They can also take some of your ideas and incorporate in their mind garden. And this way, everyone is growing their knowledge together. Another tool that is really great for public learning is Twitter. 
I absolutely love it. It's very easy to use. You don't need to know how to create complicated visuals or anything. You can start conversations with absolutely anyone. And people on Twitter are very open to just talking about any kind of idea with another stranger, which you're not going to find on many platforms. So if you do decide to give a try to mind gardening and you start publishing your ideas, whether it's directly through the tool you're using for mind gardening or on your blog or somewhere else, I also highly recommend using Twitter to disseminate this information and get feedback quicker from more people.